Hey guys, welcome to section 4.2. In this section, we'll give you an introduction to polynomials. So the first thing we need to talk about is what exactly a term is. So a term is simply a product of numbers and variables. And uh, that means three is a term, three X is a term, three X squared is a term. Three uh, X plus four Y is not a single term because it's not a product. 3x plus 4y would be two terms, meaning 3x would be one term because those two are being multiplied, and 4y would be another term because those two are being multiplied as well. Now, if I have 3x times 4y, that's all one term because it's everything is being multiplied. 3 and x is being multiplied, 4 and y are being multiplied, and then 3x and 4y are being multiplied. So, what is it that we can do with terms? Well, in mathematics, we can add them, we can subtract them, we can multiply them, or we can divide them. And in this topic, or in this section, we'll talk about addition and subtraction of terms, or, well, polynomials. So a polynomial, nomial kind of comes, or the terms come from nomial, and poly means many. So polynomial is kind of like an umbrella term that encompasses everything underneath it. So if you have one single term, that's called a monomial. If you have two terms, that's called a binomial, like a bicycle, two cycles, two wheels. Trinomial, three terms. Tricycle, three wheels. And then if you have more than three terms, well, then that gets called polynomial. So it's kind of strange in that polynomial specifically means more than three terms but polynomial also covers all of these. So basically any algebraic expression that you see that's in this form, that's either a monomial, binomial, trinomial, or more than three terms, all of them are going to be called polynomials. So now before we go on and start adding and subtracting these things, we first need to make sure we understand what like terms are. So more vocabulary. Like terms are terms that have the same base and they have the same power are called like terms. For instance, if you have 4x squared, this is one term because it's a product of 4 and x squared. 4x squared, 7x squared, negative 12x squared. These coefficients in front of them, 4, 7, and negative 12, are all different numbers, are all different coefficients. Now that does not need to be the case for two terms to be like terms. All I care about is the base and the power. So if we look at these three terms, we have the same bases, they're all x, and they have all the same power, x squared, x squared, x squared. So these three are like terms. With like terms, we can combine them, we can start adding or uh, subtracting them. Versus if we look at 4x squared, this is one term, because it's a product of numbers and variables. This is also one term, it's a product of a number and this variable. This is also one term because it's a product of this number negative four thirds and this variable x to the seventh. So they have the same base, they're all x raised to some power, but the problem is that these are not the same exponents, they're not the same powers. So this is, these are not like terms, whereas these three are like terms. This distinction is exceptionally important to us with what we're about to do next. So next we talk about adding or subtracting polynomials. And hopefully this doesn't give to pe people too much trouble. The only, I guess, problem that people typically have with this section is if they don't pay attention to which terms are like terms and which, one, which ones are not. That, that, that's essentially what it comes down to. So if you want to combine like terms with when, when you're adding or subtracting polynomials, all you have to do is add or subtract the coefficients. The coefficients are these numbers next to the variables. So if I have to simplify, or in this case add, 3x squared plus 4x minus 7, and then 2x to the fourth minus 6x cubed plus 5x squared minus 9x plus 10, it just takes a while to say that, but it's really quite a simple problem. Now here I've color coded this, and I recommend that if historically you've had trouble with this stuff, grab a couple of crayons or colored pencils or color, different colored pens and uh, start underlining terms to draw your attention. So the first thing I do is I look for the highest power. So 
the highest power here is two x to the uh, is four, and the term is two x to the fourth. So I underline that, and I look again in the rest of the problem for other x to the fourth terms. Remember, in order to be like terms, you have to have the same base and the same power. So I'm looking for other x to the four terms, and thankfully I don't have any. So I underline it and I just write down 2x to the fourth because there's nothing else that's like it. Next thing is the negative 6x to the third. And again, I look at all the powers. I don't see any other x to the thirds. So I just copy that down, negative 6x to the third. There's nothing I can do with this. Next lower power after 4 and 3 is 2. So I see a 2 here, oh, but I also see a 2 here. So I have 3x squared plus 5x squared. And the reason why I'm, about, I'm able to add these two together is because of this plus sign in the middle. So this plus sign means that whatever you have in this set of parentheses, in this trinomial, and whatever you have in this polynomial, add them together term by term or when you have like term with like term. So we have 3x squared and we have another 5x squared, 3 plus 5. Again, notice I'm just adding or subtracting the coefficients, the numbers. So 3 and 5 is 8, so I have 8x squared. And then I uh, come down one more power to x, so I have a negative 9x, and I also have a positive 4x. And again, I'm just looking at the coefficients. So 4 minus 9 is negative 5, so I get negative 5x. And then finally, I come down to the numbers, the constants by themselves, so I have a negative 7 and a positive 10, and negative 7 plus 10 is positive 3. So that's my answer. So if I were to add these two polynomials, this is what my answer would turn out to be. And that's essentially it. That's all there is to the problem. If we come down to another, or the last example. This one has a couple of subtractions. So here's where there's a slight deviation from the plan. We cannot just combine like terms. We first have to distribute these negatives. Now, why is it that we don't have to do that with this problem? Well, the reason is when you distribute a positive, nothing changes with the signs. All you would do is essentially just take the parentheses away. That's not the case with negatives. So here, we have to distribute or we have to be careful about what the signs really are. The safer thing to do is always just to distribute. So 5x squared minus 6x plus 9, I just write down here because there's a plus sign, so that does not change any of the signs inside. But because of this minus, there really is a negative 1 here, if, you, if that helps you think about things in a better manner or an easier manner. If you were to distribute the negative or a negative 1 into both these terms, you would get negative 1 times 2x, which is negative 2x. And then you get negative times 7, which gives you negative 7. And then the same exact thing happens with this negative as well. So negative times 4x squared gives you negative 4x squared. Negative times 9x gives you negative 9x. Now here's where the issue happens, where a lot of students make mistakes tend to, or typically. Negative times a negative should be a positive. So a positive one comes down. And again, now that there are no parentheses, I can simply combine like terms. So I look, I start with the highest power of the variable that I see. And in this problem, it's x squared. So I have 5x squared, and then I have another x squared term here with a negative 4. So 5 minus 4 gives me just the 1. Now you can write a 1 here, but by convention, we typically don't. If it's just x squared, we just leave it as it is. Next, we move on to the next lower power, which is just an x. So we have negative 6x minus 9x. This should actually be a 15x or negative 15x. Uh, pardon my mistake. This should be a negative 15x. Oh, never mind. I did not make a mistake. Just skip this one over. So I have a negative 6x minus 2x, which is negative 8x. And then negative 8x minus 9x gives you negative 17x. And then finally, if we go down one power again we, to just a constant, we have 9 minus 7, which is 2, and then 2 plus 1, which is 3. So if you simplify all these three polynomials, combine like terms after you distribute the negative, 
this is the final answer. That's it. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out.